Okay, number two, we're asked to solve another rational inequality. And once again, you want to avoid the temptation of quote-unquote cross-multiplying at this point. You never want to multiply an inequality by a variable because you don't know where the variable has been. You don't know if x minus 1 is positive or negative, so you don't know whether or not you'd have to switch that inequality. So the first step is we always get everything on one side and 0 on the other. So I'm going to subtract off the 2x divided by x plus 3 from both sides. So this would be then greater than or equal to 0. And I'm going to go get a common denominator, which in this case, for the common denominator, I need a factor of x minus 1, as well as a factor of x plus 3. So the least common denominator here is going to be the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 3. So I'm going to have two fractions. So I need to rewrite these with the common denominators. So what factor am I missing going uh, from here to here? I'm missing the x plus 3 factor. So I need to multiply the denominator by the quantity x plus 3. So to keep the fraction the same, i got to multiply the numerator by the quantity x plus 3. In the second term, I'm missing the factor x minus 1, so I'm going to multiply the numerator by the factor x minus 1. So at this stage, you can see if I canceled out these common factors, I'd be right back to where I started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fix up these numerators. I'm going to distribute the 4x through, and I get 4x squared plus 12x, and I'm going to go ahead and keep the denominator factored. You'll see why here in a couple minutes. Distribute this through. I get 2x squared minus 2x bigger than or equal to 0. So now I'm going to combine these fractions. I've got the same denominator, so I can go ahead and subtract the numerators. So I'm going to take this numerator and subtract it from that numerator. So 4x squared plus 12x minus the quantity 2x squared minus 2x. So the 4x squared minus the 2x squared, well, I can get rid of the parentheses on the first grouping. I don't really need them. And then I distribute the negative 1 through here. So minus 2x squared plus 2x. Combine the like terms. 4x squared minus 2x squared is 2x squared. 12x plus 2x is 14x. So this is the inequality we're going to be looking at now. And to solve this, we're going to make a sine diagram. I'm going to call this guy f of x. And I'm going to make myself a sine diagram. So I'm going to look to see where this function is positive, negative, or zero. And uh, then I'll be able to solve the inequality. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look for is we're going to look for the domain of this function. So we're going to set the denominator equal to zero. And you see why now the denominator I kept factored because it makes it easier to find the domain. So if the denominator is equal to zero, x is either going to have to be 1 or x is going to have to be negative 3. So that means these are two places that aren't in the domain. That means there could be a vertical asymptote there. There could be a hole in the graph there. The point is, it's possible for the function to change sign at negative, or excuse me, at 1 or at negative 3. So the domain is going to exclude these points, which means those are going to be points we need to put on our sign diagram. Uh, the other points we need to include are places where the function could cross the x-axis. Uh, the x-intercepts. So we set the function equal to zero to find the zeros of the function. So we set that equal to zero. And once again, because we have an equation here, 
we can go ahead and multiply both sides by these variables. So multiply both sides by the denominator. We get that. We can factor a 2x out of both. And setting each factor equal to 0, I get x equals 0 from here. And I get x equals negative 7 from there. So when we go to make our sine diagram, we're going to have four numbers. 1 and negative 3. 0 and negative 7. Okay, so we're going to display these critical values on our number line. We had negative 7, negative 3, 0, and 1. And at negative 3 and 1, the function was undefined, so we don't know what's going on there. At negative 7 and 0, the function was actually equal to 0. And so now we set about picking our test values. So let's pick a number less than negative 7, say negative 10. A number between negative 7 and negative 3, let's say negative 5. A number between negative 3 and 0, say negative 1. A number between 0 and 1, say a half. A number bigger than 1, let's say 2. So we take each of these numbers and plug them into the function and see what we get. So let's look at f of negative 10. So I take negative 10, plug it into the function. Negative 10 squared is 100. So I get 200 there plus 1 uh, or 14 times negative 10. So it's 200 minus 140, which is a positive on the top. And the denominator, negative 10 minus 1 is a negative. Uh, negative 10 plus 3 is also a negative. So all together we get a positive. Let's look at negative 5. Plug a negative 5 in here. Negative 5 squared is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. Plug a negative 5 in here. I get negative 5 times 14, which is negative 70. So the numerator is now negative. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative, as is negative 5 plus 3. So that works out altogether to be a negative. Let's look at negative 1. I plug negative 1 in. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 14 times negative 1 is negative 14. So this is giving me a 2 minus 14, which is negative. A negative 1 minus 1 is a negative. A negative 1 plus 3 is a positive. So altogether I get a positive. Let's look at f of 1 half. I plug 1 half into this. 1 half squared is a fourth, so I get 2 times a fourth, which is positive, plus 14 times a half, which is 7. That's a positive, so I get a half plus 7. Numerator is decidedly positive. 1 half minus 1, though, is negative. 1 half plus 3 is positive, so altogether that gives me a negative. Now I plug in 2. In the numerator, I get a 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, plus 14 times 2, 28. So all together on the top, it's a positive. 2 minus 1 is a positive. 2 plus 3 is a positive. So all together, that gives me a positive. All right, so what's the final answer to this problem? I'm looking where the f of x is bigger than or equal to 0. So I'm looking for positives and zeros. So it's positive from uh, negative infinity up to negative 7. And since it's 0 at negative 7, I'll go ahead and include it. Union. Uh, where else is it positive? It's positive between negative 3 and 0. I don't include the negative 3 because the function's undefined there. But I do include the 0 because the function itself is 0 there. And where else is it positive? From 1 to infinity. I don't include the 1 because the function's undefined there. Okay, so greater than or equal to 0, I'm looking for positives and zeros. 
So my answer is minus infinity to negative 7 inclusive, union excluding negative 3 up to and including 0, union 1 off to infinity excluding the 1. So that'll do it for number 2, and that'll do it for checkpoint quiz 4.3.